Hey guys, Erica with the Cake here. Today's video is going to be with David Santiago. What's up guys? And we are going to do a little interview. I wanted to have him on my channel because he had me on his podcast and he's just really awesome at everything small business and I think that we could really pick his brain and have fun with this. Also, there were no cars driving by until I started this. <laughs> <laughs> now there's hard works. car driving by, so I hope you can hear us. All right, so let's get into this. You ready? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm a little nervous. All right, so let's start off easy. Tell me about yourself. About myself. My name is David Santiago. I enjoy long walks <laughs> on the beach. Sure <laughs> that. My name is David Santiago. I was born and raised in the South Bronx, Bronx, New York. Um, by trade, I'm a licensed master barber. I've been cutting hair. This is my 20th year. Um, that is how I transitioned into scalp micropigmentation. Um, and I've been living in this area, the Putnam County area, for 11 years. Wow. 20 years? This year will complete my 20th year that I've been cutting hair. I started, wow, well, maybe more. Licensed. Wow. Actually, no, no, I was 15. Yeah, I was 15 years old. Yeah. I started when I was 13. I started working in a barbershop when I was 15. Did you know somebody or you were just like, I want to do this, so I'm just going to start working here? Oh, this is a great story, man. <laughs> so, I got into barbering by mistake. So, we were so poor that I couldn't get, I couldn't afford to get a haircut. And I remember at the time it was a $7 haircut. Wow. So, for my 13th birthday, I knew my limit was $40. So I told my mother, don't buy me a gift, because she used to cut my hair. And at 13, you're not making that transition to be cool. Mm -hmm. So she used to give me these crazy shape-ups, and my friends would make fun of me, like, dude, what the hell no. happened to your hair? My mom, I can't tell her no. And she would smack me, shut up, I'm cutting your hair. So I told my mom, I don't want you to buy me a gift, give me the $40. I went to Q Connection in the hub in the South Bronx, and I bought my first Anders T outliner, because I was like, I'm going to start cutting my own hair. I didn't know that an outliner all you can do is a shape up. So I had an afro with a shape up, but all my other friends were poor too. So I used to do their shape ups and I used to charge them $2. Then I started getting a bunch of other kids from around the block Look at you, that were cool. like, can you give me a shape up? So I was like, screw that, I'm gonna charge $5. So that's how it started. So when you know I became natural at it, I was starting making money to me. I was like, oh, I can make money and it's cash. So I started evolving into getting clippers and I yeah. started cutting hair. 15 years old, I started sweeping the hair in a barbershop because no one would trust me to cut their hair. Yeah. And then one dude one day was in a rush, sat down in a chair. I cut his hair. I did a great job. Even the other older boss was like, holy crap, like this kid is actually really good. Like let him rent the chair. And then from there it was Wow, so you started renting a chair. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Very at the cool. time actually, you know what? Yeah, they didn't even put me on commissions. And at the time I think I was like $125 to rent the chair. For what, a week? A month? Every week. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, it's up to like $200 and something dollars now. Wow. Am I like stuck in the 90s? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. whoa, that's a lot of money. Some, some guys are paying like $210 now. Wow. All right. This is not one of the questions that we have, but I have to ask. Do you ever feel uncomfortable taking money from people? That's a weird question, but I have to ask it for you. So... I'm gonna ask you to elaborate because I'm from the South Bronx. When you say taking money, no, like, I mean like charging my strong somebody. Mom in them? <laughs> no, 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 like give me, <laughs> give me your money, or like, hey, I just gave no, you a service. I gave you service. This is the price. Like, do you ever like feel like, oh, I have to discount you because I know you, or I want to discount you for any kind of reason, or you just like, hey, here's what it is. This is the price. No, if I give you a service and it's a great service that you're, especially if you're telling me like I came to you because you're the best. Yeah. Like, you gotta pay to play. Right. But now, if you're like a loyal client of mine and like every now and then like if I just feel like I want to give you a little more value and appreciation because you've been coming to me for some time and matter of fact I do do that like for the I cut hair on Fridays only and I give them like a, a card so every time they come nine they get nine haircuts and the 10th one is free ah. or I'll just say no don't worry about it I know you always give me $40 just <clears throat> give me 30 bucks wow. I'll do little things like that but okay, paying okay. full price I have no Another question. No problem. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> None of these are on here. Okay, so only on Friday do you cut hair? So I, I just stopped it like two weeks ago. Wow, how's that going? Are people just like coming in, figuring the crap so out? So for, for Fridays, it was because these were clients that have been with me for years. Okay. And I got into scalp micropigmentation and then yeah. I just started doing that. And they were like, yo, come on, bro. Like, I'm not looking for another barber. Like, yeah, so okay. 
there's no that. one up here that can cut hair like you. Yeah. So I remember that feeling too. Because yeah. you know, yeah. once you find that barber, like oh, yeah, you yeah. stay with yeah. you for life. Yep. You're familiar with that. Yeah. What you do, like no one want to go to another county. Like nope, keep doing my hair. So I had Friday booked just for that. So then as the SMP just started picking up, and then just you know the other businesses, I was like, I'm going for making for a service that I can make anywhere from fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars, and then now Fridays I'm doing thirty dollar haircuts. Yep. So yep. it's kind of like, uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, I can't do this every day. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm back. Got it. All right, makes sense. All right, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a cartoonist and a stand-up comedian. Alright, elaborate on this. So, a cartoonist is just, I, I always, I just love drawing. Like, that's just what I did. I was that kid who doodled and got in trouble in school. <laughs> and <laughs> the drawing, so I started with graffiti. Okay. I mean, I grew up in the, I grew up in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I'm an 80s baby in the South Bronx. That's yeah. all you saw. All these beautiful colors put together. So to me, I was like, oh, this is dope. And I started doing graffiti, and then that started transitioning into like two-dimensional characters, okay. which at the time was unheard of. But if you look at cartooning now, mm -hmm. like that's where the money is. So I wanted to be a cartoonist, and I always had an appreciation for comedians because I knew like if you make people laugh, they will be accepting. And I also knew that that was the number one way to get a girl because <laughs> girls is like. <laughs> girls like you make her laugh that's it you know you can have whatever you want yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. look however you want but no I, I i always enjoyed um comedy and just making people laugh my family was like oh you're funny so then i was like oh you know i would love to be a stand-up comedian that's so cool but i never pursued it because i was i was too shy i was like an introvert you this was, is I was not, just gonna say any stage fright like would you get now no like this now the, the, the David you see now, this is the David accepting, like, yo, you're an entrepreneur, dude. Yeah. Like, you need to yeah, be, it up, be what is it? they call it, like, a social butterfly. Because mm -hmm. if you're not, this, mm -hmm. you know, the closed mouth don't get fed. Yeah. So, yeah. like, now, I'll go on a stage, I'll do whatever, I don't care. Is it when it's in your your uh, element or your realm of, like, what you're comfortable or, like, anytime? Like, there's a party going on, you're, you're the first one, you're like, hey, I'm here. Yeah. Essentially, that's yeah, it right now. I like cool. to be that guy. Like, yeah. oh, he's here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I'm yeah. here. Yeah. All right. Description of your business. Describe your business. I know you have a lot of them, so feel free to just right. go ahead on this one. Okay. So, yeah. let me say go ahead. <laughs> okay. Time out. Time out. Before you say it. I was saying ham for the longest time. My husband's like, do you even know what that means? I'm like, like go hard on it. He's like, that mm. exactly. It is. I just found out what it actually is. Wait. So, let's make sure that. Hard as it, and really, really, really. Yeah, hard, hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's still, but it's still. Thing. I thought you gave up. I was like, yeah, oh. I'm this. Like, I had no idea. He literally was like, uh, Wait, it's you, song, you, and you thought you made it up? Yeah, That's I had no awesome. idea where it was. It is, it's a song. It's no Go idea. ahead. Yeah. What is it, Kanye West, right? And a uh, big shot, I think. That's what so seems like I thought I made funny. it up. <laughs> so, um, so, I have Scout Solutions, which is. I'm I'm sorry. Um, I have Scalp Solutions, which is a, it's a non-surgical hair restoration clinic. Well, not a clinic, it's a studio mm -hmm. um, where I offer scalp micropigmentation and cranial prosthesis, which is a hair, hair unit for, for men, exclusively men. Um, I also have the Scalp Solutions grooming products, which that's still in the works, so yeah. that should be launching 2021 January. Um, just started a trucking company with my partner, so, cool. so that's exciting, you know, going into a whole other uh, realm. And then I also have the podcast, too, yes. the Scout Solutions uh, podcast, and that's it for right now. That's what's yeah. keeping me, you know, on that balance beam. All right, another one's on How do you stay motivated? How do I stay motivated? You got a lot motivated. going on. Like, you ever just feel like, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to do anything today? No. No. How do you not feel that way? <laughs> because I spent so much of my life knowing I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I wasn't doing it. And then I remember hearing this quote one day, uh, dude said to another guy, he was like, you're a waste of talent. Oh, shoot. That was in uh, 
on the Bronx Tale? I don't really remember. I, 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 don't, so. I don't even think I was watching. <laughs> I just heard it. Like hard, like him. Oh yeah, I made it up. I made it up. I made that up. I made that up. <laughs> um, no, no, like I, I just heard it. I, I heard it. I don't know if it was an audio book or if it was a movie, yeah, yeah. but when I heard it, it made me feel like a piece of shit. And oh, here's why: sad. because I knew like the barbering hustle. I never, I was like, man, like, why don't I have my own barbershop? Yeah. Like, guys are coming up to me and asking me for advice, how to start this, how to start that, and I'm giving it out. Yeah. But I'm not, you know, I'm not a product of my own talk. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I'm tired of knowing and not doing it. Like, that's, that's why I'm a waste, I'm a waste of talent. So yeah. then I was like, you know what? It's time to go ham. That's <laughs> so, so inspirational. So, you went ham. Yeah. So <laughs> then I was like, you know what? Now I'm going to just start doing my thing and I haven't lost my motivation because I spent so many years in like I, I, it was, I had none wow. to move like it was every night falling asleep like I got all these ideas putting them down on paper but I wasn't doing anything with yeah, it yeah. so now that I mean I'm gonna tell you what I was like 30 34 going into 35 when I was like yo that's it like what do you got to lose yeah, just yeah. do it and you know as entrepreneurs that's the biggest thing is the fear of failure but yeah, then you start course. learning like it's not really failure it's, it's just a lesson right. exactly so now i just go full blast with it and yeah. i'm still not satisfied like i feel like there's just uh, so yes. much more and once you become an entrepreneur yeah, like you can right. hear it yeah. that yeah you're never satisfied yeah, and then now i'm like oh yeah i've got four businesses and then you start yeah. reading these books yeah. and they're like well, the average millionaire has six to seven streams of income. So it's like, I need three yeah. more businesses. Yeah. So that's what keeps me I hear you. Uh, motivated. Okay. I had another question. Piggybacking on that, but now I can't remember what it was. It was, oh, do you ever feel overwhelmed by everything you have going on? Hell yeah. You do? Okay. Absolutely. All right. That makes me feel better because I'm yes. like, I'm always overwhelmed. It's supposed to. Okay. I, of course I am. Because, I mean, I'm dealing with clients for the SMP and I'm dealing with dudes that are experiencing hair loss so like you're talking about like this is not just like a haircut like you, you're dealing with men that have like for the most part someone that has really bad complex yeah yeah you know so it's like how do i make this dude feel good about himself again yeah. how do i give him his mojo back like, yeah. how do i talk to him <laughs> let him know this service is gonna be amazing and gonna turn you into a whole new man so you got that stress because if if you don't got what we call it verbal judo, if you don't got that gift of gab, mm -hmm. you're not going to convert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can be really good at your skill yeah. all you want, but if you don't know how to talk about what you do yeah. and sell it, you're done. Oh, yeah. So you got that, and you got the business portion of it, which is the money, yep. taxes, mm -hmm. writing checks, the phone calls, and now you start a whole other business that requires the same exact things. Yep. You got the influx of, you know, one month I made ten thousand dollars, this month I made two thousand yeah. dollars. Oh shit, I just made five hundred dollars. Yes. So like for that to not yeah. stress you out. Like yeah. it's all, like people I hear people say that that doesn't stress them, that they look forward to that. And for me it's kinda like I God bless you. Yeah. Because that for me is like, wait a minute, ten thousand, two thousand. Yeah. Holy crap, I didn't get a client for this business yeah. at all today. This one's doing okay. Mm -hmm. Like that for me, like that that seesaw, it drives me nuts. But I tell myself that this is just part of the game because yeah. I'm sure everyone else, every other entrepreneur is experiencing it. So like yeah. that's what keeps me going. But I am at this that's why I got a tattoo <laughs> hairline. Because I stress We're myself today. Out. We're 20. That's right. This is this is scalp micropigmentation, you guys. So if you want a fresh tattoo like this, a scalp tattoo, come see me. All right, guys. It looks so good. Stressed out. Thank you. I remember when I met you. It was you, your hair. Your hair <laughs> was, <laughs> all the oh yes, <laughs> I was wearing a I was wearing yeah, a frontal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you did not see me wearing it. And you were like, whoop. Yeah, and yeah. Took off. Yeah. I was wearing a frontal. Yeah, I was experimenting because anytime uh, uh, a business hit me up, I was like, hey, you want to use our products? Before I put it on my client, I would just shave, like I would cut out a box so on my head funny. and then I would put it on and see if I would get like any adverse reactions or anything. Oh 
oh, before wow. I put it on a client and yeah. think that some kind of crazy information is going to sue the crap out of me. Yep. So yep. I'd be my own, I'd be my own guinea pig. Yep. So that's why. That's did I kill so it off you? you? Or did, did I get shook? No, yeah, I think you killed it back. I'm pretty sure because I, I remember like, this is not my real name. I'm like, you just killed this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so funny. All right. Another question that's not on here, but since we're talking, let's talk. Um, what about like getting insurance and stuff? Is that is that like an overwhelming thing for you? The insurance for the 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 Halo Studio, it was I thought it would be. Okay. Um, it was not. That was actually a very easy process. I, it was so easy. I thought it was a scam. No. Seriously. I was like, there's no way that yeah. this. Yeah. It was like, I checked off. It was a questionnaire that you don't even like type in the answer. You just like check off. And I guess there's so many insurance companies that it's just so watered down to the point where it's like, okay, here's 10 questions. Okay, we'll get back to you with a quote. And like, you, I didn't even talk to anyone. Wow. They came back, they gave wow. me a quote. And if you accept the quote, then they'll put you with like a broker. Right, who, right. Who explains it in further detail. But the insurance, it was easy. It was working without the insurance. Uh, it's scary. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to mess up yourself. Okay. Your product. Can we talk about your product line? Of course. Getting insurance for that. Was that the hardest thing in the world? So I haven't got insurance for the product because I haven't been. Okay, okay. So okay. right now what we did was it was a, we just did like a testing phase. Yep. So with the testing phase, we had clients fill out you know, consent form yeah. to cover yeah. us. Where it's like, listen, you know that this is all oh, on you. We're so still smart. experimenting. So, so if you wake up one day and <laughs> half your hair is missing, <laughs> like you can't sue me. Um, That's very yeah. Funny. So it was just you know, it was still it was in the uh, experimental phase. But um, once we put it out, I don't think that, and we looked at that. Like, I don't think you necessarily have to have insurance for the actual product itself if. Okay. Because I, I want it to be e-commerce, yeah, yeah, yeah. or unless like when a client comes in, yeah. I'll sell it to them. Yeah. If I want it like a walk-in, like where they're buying off of a rack, yeah. then I think I'd have to oh. do insurance to insure the, the okay. facility. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I could be wrong. Okay. You but might from when I checked, okay. I didn't think I had to put it yet. Look up cyber insurance because if you're gonna sell it online, okay. Look it up too. Sorry. See okay. That? Right. You learn something. Every day. <laughs> Yeah, so with the with Scout Solution, I'm going on three years. Um, I started on that because when I was on active duty in the Marine Corps, I got invited to a barber battle that was in Maryland. So they called me up because they saw I came out like on the website in the newspaper because I I would I was there as the medical case manager for the entire East Coast. So okay. that meant like I, I was taking the Marines, all wounded, ill, and injured. For the most part, these are guys that were getting blown up overseas. Holy crap. Take them off the medevac, put them in their room, see them all the way through. They transitioned out into the civilian sector. But they would get their Purple Hearts and any other awards while they were at the hospital. So now these guys are injured. They can't go down to the barber shop. I was no still way. already a licensed barber, and I had my tools with me. So a big thing in the Marine Corps is hygiene. Gotta look like a marine 24 7 or you know bushy hey, and stuff yeah. like that so i started cutting their hair make them look good feel good which was crazy for me because that was the first time i remember the first marine that i cut his hair for i was like hey brother you're getting your purple heart tomorrow the sergeant major and the commandant marine corps come in big deal yeah and he was like yeah i was like shit i was like don't worry i'm gonna fix that so i gave him a nice fade wow. not like your traditional high and tight yeah. i gave him a, I gave him a nice fade and i remember him crying he was like Damn, Sergeant, you made me look like a Marine again. And I was like, kind of like, oh shit, like, this did something. And it's something that's still related, because, you know, like, as Calvin tells you, as a barber, you know, when you, that feeling when they look at their head, you're yeah. like, oh my God, you made me look amazing. For yeah. us, that's yeah. the most gratifying thing. Oh, like, yeah. I did a good job. Started doing that for every every um, Marine, and they ended up making its way onto, like, a website down there. No. Way. Yeah, they were like Barber of the Year they gave me, which yeah, was crazy. Yeah, so like cool. Andis sent me stuff. It was like, we've seen this. Like, here, we're sending you all this equipment. Use it. Yeah, Thank you for your so service. Cool. So, a barber that was putting together a, uh, 
you know, it's kind of like an expo. Mm -hmm. He hits me up and he's like, yo, we want you to come down and participate in the fastest fade competition because we know all you do is fade and you're probably going to kill it. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I was like, how much time I got? He was like, we're going to give you 10 minutes. I was like, 10 minutes? He was like, that's too much. I was like, dude, I'll do a fade in like three minutes. No, it takes me a half hour to so, stop. Stop. Yeah, I actually give you, I, I got the, oh yeah, if I'm doing the, yeah, I'll, wow. if the hair's already, like if I'm not taking anything off on the top, oh yeah, I'll, it's ridiculous. That's so good. I could do like a full cut. Like I never did it like while I was working. Yeah, For me, yeah. it was always like, let me give him at least half yeah. an hour. But um, I go, I win the fast pay, I get uh, more equipment, trophy. I start walking around the venue. I see these two guys doing what I thought was a tattoo. So I'm like, why are they here? It doesn't make any sense. It's a barber yeah. like expo. When I got within five feet of their booth, I saw what they were doing, and I was like, hold up. That's so cool. This is revolutionary because as a barber, all I used to get was dudes sitting down like, hey, you got something to fill my hairline? Mm -hmm. So I had all these little tricks with enhancements that I would do. But now I'm watching these guys and I'm like, these guys are making a permanent hairline. That's so cool. Done deal. So that was my introduction to it. Started asking them questions. Wow. Got the training. And after that, it was awesome. game over. Am I, is it weird if I say thank you for your service? I think it's so important. Thank you for your Thank you for my service. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> there's, a, there's a meme that I saw, you know, Leonidas who, from the movie 300? Yes, yes. So you know the, the tall dude that he's fighting? Yeah. So it, it, it's like a picture of him like that. He's like, thank you for my service. Thank you for my service. No, I never get caught up on it. I always just say thank you. All right. Okay. What personal skills do you bring to the table that separate you from the rest? So, I'll just touch on just the scalp micropigmentation, right? And just dealing with hair loss in general. I would say my sense of humor, especially for what I'm doing. Like, I could be very like, well, this is what you're experimenting. Not experiment. This is what you're experiencing. You have scalp psoriasis and make it seem yeah. as bad as it really is. Or, like, what I would do is like, oh, well, you have scalp psoriasis, but guess what? Lucky for you, I got something that we can put, wash it up, and guess what? You'll be back to being a plumber again. And yeah. the guy's like, well, I'm not a plumber. I'm like, you don't get it? Like, you're going to be laying pipe, man. And then they're like, oh, you know, like, I'll say corny things like that to bring them back. Yeah. But at the same time, make them feel like, yo, you know, you're going to go back to looking like a stud. So, yeah. like, I think that, especially in the industry that I'm in, yeah. like the hair loss, like, I don't see too many of them. Uh, whether it be practitioners, you know, doing that because they don't see that as uh, as being a professional. Right. You know, they think. Seriously. I have a different interpretation of what being a professional is. Like, yeah. for me, being a professional is like you came in, I gave you a good service and a good experience. Right, right. And you're not just walking out like, all right, I paid $2,500 and I look like, it's like, no, I paid $2,500. Dude's awesome. Yeah. You made me look. Oh, I feel even better because I'm like, look at you, dude. Now, if I was a girl, if I was a girl, just know I might, I might let you go. Man. <laughs> Stuff like that. So I would definitely say my sense of humor so is yep. what you know I bring over. And you can't teach that. Like, no, just, you can't. You can't teach that. Right? Yeah. Some people just don't have it. They don't have it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So how do you get the background and skills necessary to run a small business? I jumped off the porch. Just jumped. I just, I took all the hits, falls, I just, it was never, I never took it as failure. It's crazy because I always, I was kind of like looking, even till now, like I look forward to like hitting my next wall because it's kind of like, I just want to learn that lesson so I never have to repeat it again. Yeah. So like at first it was, I was like, I'm scared to do it. I'm not going to do it. Now it's like, I'm doing it. And it's like, all right, it happened. This is the worst that can happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. they're not going to accept me for this. So I didn't get approved for this. So, like, just do it. Yeah. Just doing it and not being scared to learn along the way. Yeah. And reading. I started reading. I hated reading. I hated reading. Really? I started reading books. I would wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning trying to build this routine from reading all these books. I was like, this is, you know, the millionaire habits. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, let me try it. You know, let me try this whole, the, these millionaire habits and the whole uh, law of attraction stuff. And yeah. I start reading books and like, I 
shit you not. Like, I start gathering all this information and yeah. I'm putting it down and like I'm putting it to play and I'm like, this is worth it. So like now I'm reading a book a month. I'm like, I wow. could read a book a year. A book a month, that's impressive. So I'm waking up every morning, wow. I'm reading for an hour and I have my coffee. What time do you get up? Five o'clock in the morning. Ooh, what time do you go to bed? Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, five o'clock in the morning, 5.30, I work out as you can see. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you for your service. Just kidding. Thank you. Um, so five o'clock in the morning, read coffee. I just started working out again like three weeks ago because wow. I allowed the, the hustle to get to like it consume yeah. me. Yep. And that's another thing, right? The rich, they all they all say like I'm doing everything minus like I gotta work out. Yeah. But like yeah. I'm trying to get back to that. And then maybe maybe I'll be rich. <laughs> so I can do my hundred push ups Um yeah, I, I started reading and I go sometimes one or five, two o'clock in the morning. So if I get four hours, yeah, I've been doing this for years. No, but you don't even look tired. No. <laughs> but I, I got out of work this morning at 7 20. No. I way. did a 12 hour shift. Holy came moly. Out here, but that's just what I've been doing. That's just been the process. You never feel like I just got to go to bed? Yes, but even when I get to bed, I'm on. So Would you I'm just always. Huh? I think you were just fighting back at your own, were you? Nope. <laughs> because I'm like, oh, no, 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 I wasn't. Did it? Did I look I like I think you look like you did. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> You're I'm like, tired. no, no, I'm tired. Um, no, like, I, I'm tired, but, like, even if I go to bed where I know I get, like, eight hours, like, it's just, I gotta be, like, really, really exhausted. Because I'll just turn over my phone with the notes and. Notes, I mean, is that not, like, the biggest thing for us? That's notes? such a. It's, yep. it's, it's worse than Instagram. Yeah. Yep. Cause I'm like all, oh, oh, and I just found out you can put pictures. Yeah. Into the notes, yeah. so like every time I'm screenshotting something, I'm like, yeah, perfect. Put Those in the notes. Those links in there too. It's great. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, that's that's just that's my routine. Wow. Like, I can get four hours of sleep. I'm gold. Wow, that's impressive. Holy moly. Well, that's the marine in me too. I'm sure. Cause that's where that came from. How many hours did you get as a marine? Like what was like? Like typical? four, five. It all depends. It all depends on where we're going, like where we're training, where we overseas, you know, some nights, two or three. That's one thing they teach you is how to, you know, focus under sleep deprivation. Wow, well, I guess that makes a lot of sense, right? So, I could get four hours and hit you for 16, 20 hours, like, it's not Oh, nothing. you don't get, like, delirious? I start getting delirious in, like, a No, only when I start drinking tequila. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I'm 20 hours in and I start drinking tequila, yeah. Then, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm tired. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. How do you market your business? And how, like, how are people aware of your business? Social media? I can't tell you my marketing secrets. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. That's going to be in the memoir. Is it? Are you writing a book? No. Oh. I'm not there yet. Uh, marketing. Okay. For me, believe it or not, it's just a lot has been word of mouth. Like, when I first started, I invested in, like, a Google ads. I hired a marketing guy. I spend a crap load, like thousands of dollars on. Um, once I started posting pictures of my work at certain times, like lunchtime or like at eight, nine o'clock at night, when people are just browsing. Yeah, or you know that dude that's living here is like, all right, wifey sleeping. Let me yeah. look do like what helps, yeah, you know, yeah. like oh, and shoot. that started picking up for me. And then just I started creating a little more content. That helped me out. Yeah. Um, so just posting pictures on Instagram, linking it to Facebook. Okay. Um, and Google ads here and there. And your Instagram links directly to Facebook, you don't go separate to Facebook? No. I, whatever I post on to Instagram, a lot of people don't know that either. Yeah. You can put, you know, you can connect it. So when you post oh, yeah. it on Instagram, um, it goes on Facebook. So I link them like that. Are you more of an Instagram person or a Facebook person? Instagram, Instagram. because okay. Facebook, you know, that's like the, the aunt and uncle community. Yeah. But you know, I, the, the uncles, oh, are, the, the uncles yeah. are experiencing him too, so oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I give them a little bit too, yeah. but no, definitely Instagram. Do you get a lot of people through your social media, would you say? Like, oh, do they say, like, I found you through social yeah. media? That's awesome. Yeah, the majority. That's so Just cool. through uh, social media. I would say it's like 60 40. 60 okay. social media and then 40 word of mouth. Okay. And do you have like a referral program? I do, I do, yeah, I get 10% for, nice. for other, yeah. okay. and usually people don't even take it, it's just like, no, you did such a great job on me, man, like, 
Just make my cousin look good. So where do you see your business in the next year, five years, ten years? So for the next year, um, I'm trying to evolve the, the scalp micropigmentation business into a training platform. So I got a part of that just teamed up with now. I'm trying to create this amazing experience where it's not just the, the trainees come in and learn the technique of scalp micropigmentation. Like coming back to like just, cause now you're learning the skill to become an entrepreneur, but like there's so much more that goes with this. So we're gonna have someone, we're gonna have a lawyer there that's gonna talk to them about the LLC and so cool. you know why you wanna so form cool. it. Um, I wanna make contact, maybe have like a liaison with an insurance person that can talk to them why you want it, the, the, what can happen if you don't have insurance. Yeah. Um, and then I also wanna invite other practitioners that are successful in the industry so that they can come. Cause if they see me, they're gonna expect me to say, this right. is a great industry, look how much money I make, <laughs> blah, 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 you know, yeah. selling their dream. Yeah. I'd rather bring in some of my friends that are successful practitioners so that the trainees can talk to them or hear them, you know, their yeah. stories and so cool. understand that, you know, you're not just gonna blow up, you know, mm -hmm. if you're gonna grind for a little bit. So for, for Scout Solutions, we're, you know, starting to work on that, moving into the training platform. Like I said, we just opened the trucking company. So we're looking to start with two semi, uh, you know, track trailer, that's the big yeah. truck. Start with two of those, hopefully grow it into a nice small fleet, maybe like 10, 20, that's awesome. 20 trucks. We got the grooming line that should be ready to rock and roll for January. It's just with this whole COVID stuff, the packaging has been crazy. I don't want to change yeah. my packaging. But um, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm going And then what, for five years, I'm hoping by five years, I'll be more separated from actually performing scalp micropigmentation and I can like train someone and let them sit in and, and do the, the actual procedure yeah. while I go around training, you know, for the scalp micropigmentation and for the trucking company. If by five years I can have 10 trucks, that's awesome. I'd be very happy. And hopefully by the fifth year, the grooming products are a household name within the industry because even though it's grooming products, but I'm also creating, we also created aftercare products for scalp micropigmentation, yeah. Yeah. which not many exist. So I was like, let me just get in it now before yeah. everybody and their mother yeah. has yeah. a product. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have two questions that are gonna come from this. One of them is just kind of random, but I see a lot of scalp solutions on Instagram. Are you affiliated with all of them or is that just? Nope. I own the trademark. What? No way. So I don't even bother with it because <laughs> when so, so here's a, here's another thing right about business that I did not know. And I attribute a lot to this. So I did a mentorship program under Damon John. Okay. That's you know, he's one of the sharks on Shark Tank. I did not know that. That's so cool. This dude put everything out there and was like, if you want to be a business that's gonna be respected, this is what you need to do. So, while creating Scout Solutions, the goal, which I didn't say about the 10 year, by the 10th year, I would love to turn it, I'm just retracting really? it over. By the 10th year, if I can get this where I can franchise it, that'd be great. That's awesome. Right, so now thinking that big and scaling that big, I knew, like starting, that I needed to trademark my name. Right. Because I knew everybody and their mother at some point was gonna have scalp solutions. So I could send my lawyer to send cease and desist okay. letters where it's kind of like, hey, you're not scalp. But those guys, <laughs> like the, the, the people that do have scalp solutions, is like they don't have it to where like you are it's right affecting now. me. Yeah. But if I start getting a little gangster, I'll <laughs> send my lawyer on that ass. Um, so yeah, so for me, like that doesn't scare me because I feel like, and especially with the podcast, um, I interview a lot of crazy dope practitioners, but a lot of them are just very knowledgeable on scalp micropigmentation. That's, that's it. it. Okay. And I always like, you know, my close friends. I tell them a lot of people who don't understand it. Just because you, just because you own a business, doesn't mean that you're a business person. Oh, 100%. 100%. There's so much more to it. So like with the name thing, like. 
I'm not worried about that because when a big business, you know, these big businesses that, that they buy other businesses because they see something better and they got the capital for it, mm-hmm. they're never going to look at them. Yep. They're going to go and look. They're going to see the name and they start looking through trademarks because for them, that shows them if this is a real business. Like that's what considers you a real business. Trademark. Just the trademark that, the, well, that belongs to you. And to further elaborate, Damon John said, the difference between a business that is not trademark and a business that's trademark is me saying, I'm gonna give you $100,000 for your business, but I want 85% ownership, no trademark, right? So let's say if you sat down in front of Damon John yeah. and you told him, hey, I have a business, my company's called Scalp Solutions, I want you to give me $100,000 for 10% of my business. Okay. Right? You know, that's how they yeah, do on yeah, Shark yeah, Tank, right? Yeah. And he asks you, do you, are you trademark? And you go, no. He goes, here's the counter. I'm going to give you the $100,000. I want 85% of your business because it's not trademark. Now he's got to do that. Wow. He's got to make you a real business, a reputable business. Wow. Okay. Now, if you told him, yes, I'm trademark. It belongs to me. This is my entity. He'll go, okay. I'm gonna give you the hundred thousand. I want fifteen percent of your business because I'm Damon John, and if I put my name to it, it, it's gonna move. So once I found that out, I was like, "That's the last thing I want." Is okay. if some dude goes, "That's a nice business. I like the structure how he does it." I'm gonna offer him twenty million. Right. Now I kind of like, uh, no, I own this, and that's exactly what happened with the grooming product. Really? Yeah, someone hit me up and was like, they were looking to start a grooming line and they wanted to call it Scout Solutions. And when they looked, their lawyer was like, no, you can't, you can't trademark this. This belongs to David Santiago. Oh, so now they hit me up. It's like, hey, we want to we wanna talk to you about your trademark. And I'm like, okay, what about it? We want to buy it from you. They start, they start throwing numbers out. I'm like, nope. Because now I know That's I got awesome. something. So what you could do is you can lease it to them. Okay, how about this? I'm gonna let you use Scalp Solutions so you can create your grooming products under these conditions. You're gonna pay me 10% of whatever, you know, whatever, however you wanna enable it. Right. And I want you to make me an ambassador because it only makes sense. I am Scalp Solutions. Oh, what? So. That's awesome. Right. So it's like, you know, I'm not creating these products. Ooh. I'm not a scientist. I don't have chemicals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I just built a relationship with them. They have scientists. And Get I'm like, out. hey, this is what I want. And they're like, all right, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. But I my still want. Did you see this? I'm like, my mind is like, what? Right? So like even you, right? So let's just say yeah. you decided you wanted a trademark for me. Yeah. And am I saying it correct? Yeah, yeah. For yeah. And... Let's just say some multi-millionaire, these big companies that all they do is purchase little companies that they see a bigger future, but they know she doesn't have the capital. Right. She doesn't have the $10 million to invest into this company to make it the $100 million company right. that we can. So they'll come up to you, hey, we want to buy your company for $5 million. Right. Or let me, let me retract. They want to name their company for me. So it's like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to trademark because they got that money. They understand the yeah. correct business structure. So now they go trademark and they go, oh, shit, Erica owns that. Someone's going to hit you up and go, hey, you own the trademark for this, this, this. This is why I'm calling from this company. Um, we'd love to sit down and discuss you know, purchasing the trademark for you. Wow. And then they'll put on numbers at you. Yeah. So if they tell you, oh, we want to give you 850000 for your name, you already know they have a million dollars. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you could be like, uh, I don't know about that. You know, I, I built a brand around it. And how about this? Give me whatever, give me two hundred and fifty thousand, and make me a partner with you, or make me a brand ambassador, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, what is it you're trying to do? Oh, we want to open an all you need hotel. All right. Well, I don't know anything about, uh, you know, hospitality. Give me ten so percent cool. of whatever your revenue is, and I'll lease you the name. Okay. And then they're gonna go, you know what, Erica, how about this? Spoke to my guy, 
economically, especially if they're talking about building a hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got yeah, money. They got money. And they already owe me 850000 Now it's like, all right, listen, I'm just going to give you $2 million. You know, okay, he'll take it. And you can still open another four leads. Right. You just can't trademark it. But you can do it through business ads. I mean, it's a salon. Oh, okay. You can still use it. It's just yeah. you can't trademark it to take it to the next level. Okay. Okay, so what goes into trademarking? And is there a certain. Um, you can just do like you know big ones, you know, big ones, and do you have to be a certain uh, like LLC, sole proprietor? Like what? What does that matter when it comes to LLC? No. Okay. No, you don't even have to be um, a corporation. Okay. It's just so a trademark could be a logo or a slogan. Okay. Or or a name. It sounds like it's something easy to do. It is not. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. Like, yeah. I'll tell you right now, I tried to trademark the Bolsa Heroes. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to trademark this. And what happens is they'll look, okay, no one owned the name, the Bolsa Heroes. So I thought I was good. Yeah. But when 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 they put this in, they give you like a 30-day grace period where it's open, it's, it's open source. So anyone can look at that. And if they feel that, their trademark is remotely. Oh shoot! They can challenge it, and that's what happened to me. And these guys are good. They waited to the last day no. that I had the last. I think you get like whatever sixty days or something like that. So on the 59th day, the dude's lawyer contested it, and you know what was his name? And he was threatened by the boss of Heroes. What? The name of his barbershop was just called the Boss. No. What? Yes. Come on. Yes. yes. That so sucks. Oh it's gosh. great to have it done, but once you start that process, you can easily get chopped off yeah. at the ankles. Or if I may have the verbiage wrong, like if it's something that's a common phrase, like you can't trademark it. Right. Like the school bus. Yeah. They might say, I forgot what's the verb, but it's like it's the school bus. Like you can't trick people to think. Yeah. There's a school bus here. Yeah. You you would have to change the spelling of it, but still refer to it as the school bus. So let's say for you for bus, you want to put B O O S. Got it. The school bus, but they don't know that the trademark, the the the, the tra whatever they call them, the trademark administration, whoever they are. So it's just you think you have something that's unique. You can do it yourself. Um, it's not that difficult, but I would definitely recommend oh, wow. just getting a lawyer to do everything yeah. for you because they're just asking questions and you answer it. Once you start reading it, like I did two of them through a lawyer and I did one on my own. Yeah. So I was like, let me just try it and save a couple yeah. hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And that's the one that ended up getting contested. Okay. And then these lawyers, you know, they're like piranhas. Yeah. So they, they yeah. know. Oh, it's got contested. Hey, man, I can fight that for you. Give me yeah. five thousand dollars, and it's like, keep, okay, keep, because you can still use it. I can still use the Boss of Heroes, and then just put a TM on it, which means I'm the first person to put it out and make it a thing. Oh, so that okay. still gives you some sort of of owner's value. Okay, like it's that huh. when you get into that, it's it's crazy. So it's like yeah. you can either just own the trademark or you can just use it and put a TM and that just says like, hey, we're the first one to like really bring it out there and put light on it. Yeah, no, I thought so that would be trademark. Right, but if someone else went and tried to use it, you can still fight and go like, well, look, I've been using, you know, Forlini's uh, beauty bar mm -hmm. since 1994. Right. Yeah, I got pictures, I got cards. Yep. Like in my Facebook, I posted pictures, I did an event. And wow. you can go fight it like that. Yeah, so there's other wow. ways that don't involve the lawyer. And the majority okay. of people do that, but for me, okay. I knew at some point I wanted to try to get the, the business and the brand to where it would attract the attention of like some big dog. And he called me and said, I'll give you 20 minutes, but I wouldn't even be baiting him. I just started to take it. Yeah, take it. Thank you very much. Open up David's <laughs> scalp yeah. Michael Pickett. Yeah. 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 Right. All right. Um, okay, I know I keep asking questions that aren't even on here. Do you want to talk about your clothing line? Yes. Do you not want to talk about it? Or do you just access out? No, 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 it's fine. It's called. Uh, I didn't. I didn't set anything about. I didn't consider that as one of the businesses. No, you didn't. So the re uh, I did it because it's still we're still building it. So it's called Latino Camille. Mm -hmm. um, Which I love. I think it's so cool. Thank you. 
um, it's called Latino Opinion. So we're in like the age of like business empowering and stuff like that. So all you see is the same, like, you know, wisdom, hustle hard, yeah. this, that. So I was kind of like, yo, we got to put something out there that has a little bit of Latino flavor in it. <laughs> so now we made the shirts. We started with just Latino Opinion because that's the brand. Mm-hmm. Um, and use that for, you know, let them represent themselves. Like, hey, I'm a Latino entrepreneur. So yeah. I put Latino Opinion trademark on that too. Um, <laughs> I was surprised I got the trademark. I'll tell yeah, you that right now. That's shocking. Even the lawyer called me back and he was like, just know, at some point, you're going to get offered millions. That's freaking awesome. For that trademark. That's awesome. He was like, there's no if, ands, or buts. You are going to get offered millions that's so cool. for that. Regardless if you build a brand, just owning it. Yeah. Just owning it. All right. So, Latino Pinot, so I wanted to put out some empowering shirts, something simple. But I wanted to put a little, you know, like, you know, flavor. I'm, you know, I'm Puerto Rican, so I'm Puerto Rican. So I was like, you gotta do something for the people. And I'm not gonna lie, I'll be very transparent. It was somewhat of a rebellious um, line. Because when I started as an entrepreneur, especially up here, and I know you know, when we, us people from the city, we move to these suburbs, you know, we get treated a little bit. They hear the accent, they see the way we dress. We're not counties. Right, we're not. <laughs> not from the hills have eyes yeah. um, <laughs> so I would no one would rent me their space oh shoot they would not rent me their space and I would call back change my voice and they would tell me like you know we gave it to someone already but then I'll call back and like yeah it's open come in give it wow. a little so I was kind of like yo they're doing this because I'm Hispanic it was super it yeah. was because, you know, some of these people, these ignorant people, like, they, they, they don't hold anything back. They're, okay. like, very transparent on their ignorance. So I started, like, thinking, and I'm like, damn, man, I'm just trying to be a successful, like, you know, entrepreneur, man, and they're holding me back. So then I was like, damn, I need to start something, because I know there's other Latino entrepreneurs around here, but I didn't want it to just get the attention of Latinos. I just wanted just us middle class yeah. people that are trying to do something yeah. better like become amazing yeah. and build an empire without having people look at us like yeah whatever like, yeah. No, you're in a three hundred thousand dollar house like we know yeah. that but, yeah. so i was like i needed to build something i wanted to start a movement Good for you. so, so cool. i came up with latino pino and we put the shirts out and now i got like every hispanic it's like i want one <laughs> and at the beginning i was kind of like oh what kind of business you was like oh, but I want to be like, like, yeah, yeah, maybe this will inspire you to be a like, you know, entrepreneur now. So <laughs> that's still in its infancy. We just put out a couple of shirts as teasers to see if people were gonna be like, hey, we want that. And to me, like, I screwed myself with that one because I was not ready oh, for like, good I'll problem. take four. Yeah, we get three, problem. and I'm like. <laughs> I, only I don't even got a label. <laughs> like I, I, so what I did was I printed out a hundred shirts just to give them out. But about two or three weeks ago, I posted a picture wearing the sweater. Yes. And that one was like, I'll take four of those. Let me get this. Wow. Let me get this. And I'm like, dude, I don't even have a label printer. Yeah. You know, to Good start shipping these things out. So it's still in this infancy, but like now it's kind of like, hey, if you don't yeah. jump on this wave. Yeah. You're about to be screwed. Yeah. But I own the trademark, so, so if anyone else tries yeah. to take it, <laughs> it's mine. Good for you. All right, one more question <laughs> that is not on this paper, and then I'll come back to You haven't asked me any questions. I know, I'm so sorry. You sent me these questions. I was practicing all night. <laughs> You're doing so good. And and <laughs> so okay, how important is a business plan, would you say, for an entrepreneur, small business owner, uh, or just to you personally, how important is a business plan? If you don't have a business plan, you have no business in business. <laughs> and here's why. You have to have some structure. You, if you don't, and when I say business plan, like, it's not like the actual business plan that you would go when you're going to go before a lender. Right, right. It's just, you got to have some, even if it's three things. Okay, what do you want to do? Take the property. Equipment. Yeah. Who's your, you know, who's your target market? At least some sort of a base where you can build from. Yeah. But you have, you absolutely have to have a business plan because you're now investing your money 
and you can't, you just can't play with that. Like essentially, without the business plan, you're taking this throne up to the end. You're swinging it. If you got a lot of money, God bless you. Yeah, keep throwing it. Yes. Keep throwing it. Make it rain on me too. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't, and you don't have a business plan, you don't have that structure. You're already setting yourself up for failure because there is no way of running a successful business without some sort of structure. And yeah. if you can't start implementing that in the very beginning, you're not going to do it at the end. Yeah. And you're going to fail. Yeah. You're going to be part of the 90% of small businesses that open and fail yeah. for the most basic crap. And that's yeah. a business plan. Yeah. You could go on Google and steal somebody else's business plan and put yours. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Everyone does it. I did it. <laughs> it. That's how I got through my first year of college. Yeah. I've been plagiarizing my whole life. Sat by a clock for plagiarizing in college. Cool. I had a clock for plagiarizing in college. Did you? Yeah. And I was like, my parents are getting divorced. How? Oh, <laughs> I couldn't do they it. They weren't getting divorced. They did the next year, but they weren't at the time. I was like, I got guys. You sympathy tricked them. <laughs> wow. Don't judge me. Yeah. That's, that's how I got out of there. I never got caught. And I would never. verbatim. I'm like, uh, how is this not happening? I think for me, it helped because it was like, oh, he's a veteran. So for them, I was like, we don't want this kid to go to yeah. school. You got to see, David, you pass. You know, you fucking. You got to see. At the time, it was like Yahoo. And I was like, yep. Yep. yep this is what I'm writing. So but, uh, but with the business plan, I did the same thing. I did the exact same thing with the, uh, excuse me, adjustment. Um, I did the same thing with the business plan. I copied and pasted and I just went off their flow and I converted it to my business. And yeah. that was great. I, I, it's funny, I wrote the business plan. Like, I never really, like, I was eat, sleep. Like, I had to eat it. So yeah. I never had to, like, let me revert back to my business yep. plan and see what I'm doing. Yep. But I put it yeah. down. Just. Yeah. So I knew I had some kind of some kind of flow, so just yeah. some kind of structure. Okay, good. Where is your business located? We're back to the questions. The first question. <laughs> I remember studying that. Uh, I'm in Carmel, New York, so it's 250 Route 52, Carmel, New York, and then I also have a like a sub uh, sub office in Dumbo, in Brooklyn. Do you really? That's yes, so ma'am. cool. Very cool. I'm kind of fancy. You are. You really are. All right. Things you wish you knew about small business before you started. Things that I wish I knew. I wish I knew that not every month in business was going to be the same. Like, yeah, first, the first month, I was booked completely. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm about to crush it. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> then, the next month, I was spice ham. The bottom. <laughs> I was like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. I have 15 clients. My first month, yep. like I thought that trajectory was gonna keep going, yeah. and then I started learning, like, nope, like this is what yeah. you know. They always have these grids about entrepreneurs, the pros and cons of having a job, where it's like, oh, you're making fifty k, and you can make fifty k that one month, but then the rest yep. will be stagnant. Yep. So for me, I wish, you know, I I didn't come in with those expectations of like, oh, I just had an amazing month. That means the rest of the year is going to be like yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. That was good. I agree. That is very true. Um, best advice for someone wanting to venture out as an entrepreneur? Do it. If you have an idea, do it. Because if you don't do it, someone else, God, is going to take that idea and put it in someone else's yeah. head. And they're going to put it into play. And you're going to watch it. And you're going to be so pissed off. For two reasons, because you didn't do it and because they have the same concept and they suck. <laughs> and they trademarked it. And they, and they <laughs> trademarked it. So it's like, you have an idea to start, uh, whatever the hell, a, a, a freaking wood table business. Mm -hmm. And you don't do it. I started and my tables suck, but I got the business, Sorry. I got the name. Yeah. Right, I started, and now you're looking at it like, oh my God, like, look at my tables, look at his. Yeah. But guess what? You were too busy thinking, yeah. I'm doing. So that's the best advice. If you have an idea, just go for it. Don't be scared of failure. It's not fair. It shouldn't be failure. Failure should not be in your vocabulary if you're an entrepreneur. It's just a lesson. Yeah. That's simple. Yeah. And you're going to get smacked in the face so many yeah. times. Just get used to it. Yeah. That's what's going to like build that. character. And it's it gonna, does. 
build you into a successful yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah. So my grandfather, entrepreneur, he's the one who opened up, you know, for these. But uh, he said the only time it's failure is when you stop trying. Exactly. And I love that. Yeah. Okay. So in your personal experience, what are the biggest challenges for having a small business? Do you think these are repetitive? Are these annoying? No. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of like a sight test. It's like, do you scream when you're angry? Yeah. When you're angry, do you punch the wall? <laughs> do you like punching the wall? challenges for having a small business is always the not knowing, I feel. And it kind of goes with the, you know, like not knowing, am I going to have a successful month? But it's just not even a successful month. Like, am I, gonna, is this going to be successful? Am I going to be able to build a culture? Am I going to be able to build a brand? Are they going to be accepted? The people that I ask for advice on my product, are they, um, what's the, are they qualified? Like a lot of people start uh, before they start a business, they'll sit mom, yeah, pop, yeah. and their sister, yeah. right, and go, hey, right. this is what I'm trying to start, and they're like, that sounds amazing. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, but you're selling heroes products. Your father has his hair. Your mother has her hair and a goatee. Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's curious. No, 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 no. You know what I'm just saying? Like you're talking to you're talking to cavemen. And you're asking them about Halo's products. They don't know what that feels like. They don't know what it feels, the, the, the insecurities that can come with having Halo's. So they're just going to go, that sounds good, there we go. Go for it. Yeah. Right now, if you sit someone down like me and you're telling them, like, yeah, I just want to come up with this, uh, it's a dust. You put it on your head and I'm thinking like, well, I already tried that. And I was uh, with a hot date dancing in the salsa in the club. I started sweating yeah. and now I have a raccoon eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be like, you know what? I like where you're going with it, but now nah, we gotta stick to something else. Yeah. So that's another thing is, you know, who you getting your, you know, who you getting your advice from, the, the not knowing. Yeah. I mean, I could keep going on and on, but I think those will be the main tools. Yeah. Just the not knowing. Okay. Um, does your business have a mission statement and the reasons that it exists? So for Scalp Solutions, I have confidence through style. Love that. Right? So for me, I don't market my business, and it goes against all business rules, to be quite honest, because in business, they tell you you have to sell on emotion, right? For me, especially me being a balding man, like, mm -hmm. I don't want nobody telling me, like, hey, do you lack self-confidence? Come to me. Because it's kind of like, for me, yeah. it's, a, it's a kick. While I'm on the ground. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, do you lack self confidence? Yeah. <laughs> do you feel like your love life is interfering because you're there? <laughs> yeah, like, like now you're getting me to admit that I don't feel good about myself. So I go against all of that. Like, I don't ever like come to me. I'm gonna give you your confidence. This is like, hey, you don't like how you look. You want to look dope? Come to me. Yeah. Because yeah. Or you don't, you're not happy with what your your hair looks like. Come to me, I'll make you happy. But I came up with confidence through style because for man, there's not really much we can do to style ourselves. And I'm talking about like, yeah, we know that there's some men like metrosexual they go all above. Right. I'm saying your average man, what we got? Wallet, don't see it. Yeah. Watch, shoes, and yeah. hair. Hair is everything, right? How about for you? What's, what, what does it for you? I'm going to ask you the female. What does it for you when you go out? What is that makes you feel great? What is it that gives you the ultimate culture? Is it your, your shoes, your nails, um, your makeup? My makeup and my shoes. Your makeup and your shoes. That's that it. does it for you. All right. Yeah. That's your cherry on top. Mm -hmm. For men, the, literally the cherry on top is their hair. When men lose their hair, they feel like it is, is a sense of masculinity being yeah. lost. Yeah. So... I'm not going to say, hey, come to me. I'm going to give you the regain. No, I'm going to say you're going to get confidence through style. Why confidence through style? I'm going to make you look good. You're going to look at yourself. Now you're styling. Yeah. You have confidence. Not just because of your hair, but now you put it all together. Because yeah. when these dudes come to me, 
when they come back for their second session, like some of these guys come in and you can tell they're not they taking care of themselves. Like some of them have completely lost it. Wow. And then when they come back for that third session, where it's just a touch up, there's a whole new awesome. new wardrobe. Like they have completely found themselves. That's so awesome. I mean, it's just confidence to stop. I'm like, hey, come get your confidence back. And, you know, yeah. 25,000 impressions at a time or something yeah. like I just don't, every, I'm not knocking everyone else. It's just, again, and that's just being an entrepreneur. You gotta work, it's gotta be different. I don't wanna be like yeah, yeah. the rest. I don't wanna be like, I wanna be funny and just think way outside the box. And they could look at me and say, like, he's wild. I can't believe he does that. He gives his clients tequila. You're not supposed to be doing tequila. Are you really? Hell yeah. Oh, wait, okay, so that's not a problem that you're like basically Giving them one, sh one shot? No, yeah, I don't let them get awesome. drunk. I give them, like, sometimes these guys get a little antsy because they're like, oh my God, my yeah. life's about to change. Hey, partner, hold on. Take a shot. So oh, when it's done. Yeah, I love that. When the procedure's done and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. They're FaceTiming their wife. Their wife is like, oh my God, you look like you were 23. And I'm like, bro, that deserves a freaking shot. Yeah. And they're like, hell yeah. And I'm in my head, I'm like, shit, this guy just drove. <laughs> two hours, but I'm not, not I'm not, yeah, I'm not worried about once you leave, I'm worried about well, the experience, because he's like, yeah. this guy gave me my confidence back, and he gave me a shot of That's some awesome. expensive ass to kill, yeah. and when I go home, okay. my wife is resting. <laughs> so, confidence through style. Got it. Do you, do you have mission statements for your other businesses? So, the trucking company is just called Sandport. So okay. Samport, we wanted to make it a little more uh, professional looking, so it's the Samport Group. So Samport actually translates into Santiago Transport. That's so cool. But we kept it Samport because, again, we got to be very careful. There's still some very ignorant, rich people out there. I don't want them to see Santiago and go, oh, yep, that's yep, a Spanish yep, yep. business owner. I'm not giving him the business. I want him to see Samport Group. Yep. Right now, it's like, okay. Yep. Like Sounds legit. Yeah. Let's give them the money, even though you know the salsa music is in the background, yeah. right? but they don't know that. Um, Good for you. That one we're still working on one, because to be honest, like unless you're like a ridiculously big logistics company, like that's when it will really come to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With this, I'm just worried about making it look nice aesthetically, yeah, yeah, yeah. put it on the truck, make some money. Um, for the Scout Solutions grooming. Is, uh, I would put it under the same thing, you know, yeah. confidence through style. Yeah. 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 And then, how and then Latino Penor is just empower yourself. Awesome. Okay. Nothing. It's like this, right? Like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, much. okay. You didn't want to rent to me? It's a, yeah, it's, a ta <laughs> it's a tactical, like, you didn't want to rent to me? Well, guess what? Now I got a space that houses all four of my yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. And you're losing your head, and I'm not yeah. gonna fix it. And you can't wear my shirt either. Yeah, you can't wear my shirt. Alright, and then this is, the... <laughs> All right, this is the last one of the questions. I love it. Uh, what animal best describes you and why? Okay. What animal describes me and why? I'm gonna go with a chihuahua. Because no. my head is so much bigger than my body. And if you saw me, you thought I was a chump, but I'll attack your ass. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go with a pit bull. Has to be a pit bull. And a pit bull, not because of how um, aggressive they can be, right? Everyone knows that they're a, they can be a loving dog mm -hmm. depending on how they were raised. Yeah. Everyone knows, regardless of how they were raised. Regardless of how it was raised, it can yeah. cause maximum damage. So, like, you know, the way I present myself is like, oh, this guy's cool, mm -hmm. but don't piss me off <laughs> because I'll give you a pretty headline. I love it. Right, so I would say a pit bull because yeah. it's, it's a, they're loving dogs, they're protectors, but they're also working dogs. Mm. A lot of people don't realize, like, a pit bull. Those are like the ultimate work, working dogs to the point that it was actually the mascot. It was, you know, that was the United States of America mascot before it became an eagle? No. A pit bull, a bull terrier. Why, why a bull terrier? Because they're aggressive, strong, and they're workers. Okay, so they used that at one point to, to describe the American people. They need to go to work. <laughs> they got to start paying bills. So it's coming out of work. Because I would say it to my dogs, like, 
teach well, them how to watch. They don't watch it. But they, legit, like, I forgot what year, but they, they used no pit bulls to represent I the American that. people. And then it went to Bald Eagle and then Uncle Sam. The, uh, Once they started using the pit bulls to, to like, fight, they started making them fighting bulls. And so now sad. that's yeah. that's the reputation they have now. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah, like pit And a chihuahua. And a chihuahua. It's a chihuahua for me. It depends. I thought you were going to say dog, but not chihuahua. Or like a tiger or something. Chihuahua, chihuahua. on Sundays. <laughs> Definitely on Sundays. Because that's when I'm drinking the ball tequila. <laughs> I love it. All right, well, that's the last of the questions. So thank you so, so much. This was so fun. It's thank always you. so fun. It was always with fun. You. Even and with you're... the podcast, you were like my favorite person that I interviewed. You're I just saying that. I promise you. I promise you. Because we were cracking up from the very yeah, beginning. Right. My dad said to me after he listened to the podcast, he's like, I swear I don't miss Suave. I was like, yes, you do, Dad. Even from the beginning, everyone was like, dude, I knew it was going to be good because you said how old you were and how old you started. And I was like, oh, yeah, so I think that's like five. Like, yeah, math yeah. was totally old. You were only like, like 10 years old. Yeah, I was like, like, oh, so you started five years ago. It's like, mm, all right. So funny, I love it. All right. This is Oh, wait, before we go, do you want to plug your social media? Absolutely. Um, Scout Solutions. That's. In, on Instagram at Scalp Solutions NY. Uh, the website is www.scalpsolutionsny.com. And I love cigars. So if you want to mail me cigars, I'll give you a discount on your procedure. Ladies, you can do that too, and I'll give you a discount on your husband. Um, <laughs> oh, so YouTube is Scalp Solutions, but you can look me on the David Santiago. I also have a web series reality TV show. Does that make sense? Yes. web series reality yes. TV show it's called The Boss of Hair Loss check that out it's awesome it'll show you the day in and out of me in the office and it also serves as an awesome FAQ so if you're interested in scalp micropigmentation just watch one of the shows because you're going to see when the client arrives uh, how we buzz the hair down clean it uh, map out the hairline first second first second third session and just all the BS and, and the, the advice, the sex advice that I give because I'm also a certified um, sex doctor. No, you are not. I love Every this. barber is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love it, I love it. All right, well, that is it. So we're going to wrap this up. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And until next time, work hard, drink big, eat cake. That's what I was saying. Eat cake, that's right. <laughs>